Today we're going to look at the area between two polar curves. It's a little bit more challenging. So um, if we take a look at the first example, we want to set up an integral to find the area inside one, this is circle, and right over here, this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, lemicon, right? Now, be careful, this is our dimple lemicon, so it's not going to be cardio, so it's not going to touch the pole. So first thing we're going to do is going to graph them both. If we graph the circle using a little method, we're going to use theta and r. We'll go from 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, we want to make sure I want to graph the circle the first time because I want to make sure I want to tell you guys something. When you're graphing a circle, if we let theta be 0, we know the sign is 0. So we start here at the pole. At pi over 2, the sign of pi over 2 is 1, gives me a radius of 3. So we're up 3, 1, 2, and 3, and we're back to 0. Now that's kind of interesting because that's going to make our circle. We made one complete circle. So I don't need the rest because this is just going around the circle twice. So we don't need the rest there. We only want to go around the circle one time. All right. Now for the, for the other function, our lemicon, same idea. If we want to graph this one, this is our dimpled lemicon, theta and r. This is the lemison, lemison, right? It's going to go from 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. To get the radius, again, it's just going to become 0, so we get 2. So we're at 2 when we're facing 0 degree, zero radians. Pi over 2 becomes 1, so I get 2 minus 1, which is 1. Put a plug in pi, I get uh, 2 minus 0 again, so I just get 2. When I plug in 3 pi over 2, I get 2 minus a negative 1, which becomes 3. So at 3 pi over 2, we're down 3, 1, 2, and 3. And we're back to 2. So when we graph our function, we get a dimpled lemicon, kind of like so. And there we have it. Now, we're looking for the area be inside of the circle, but outside the lemison. So we're looking at this region right in here. That's the region we're looking, the shade right there. So we're going to throw some shade at this problem, you can say. So remember, when you're going to write this, when we, when we shade in polars, we don't go left to right like we would do for a function. We actually have it as, we actually measure as a radius, as a radial arm, like a windshield wiper. So we're going to actually kind of sweep out the area as we go around. Now, as we go around, if I start at zero radians, I'm not going to be shading anything until I reach this point right here. But once I reach this point, I'm looking at, I'm in shading, shading, shading until I get to this point where we stop shading. So of course, we have to find that intersection. To get the intersection, we just set our two equations equal to each other. 3 sine theta equals 2 minus sine of theta. And that's going to give us the sine of theta equal to 1 half. And you can verify that if you need to. So where is sine equal to 1 half? Well, sine is equal to 1 half at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So what's that telling us here? It intersects at pi over 6 equals theta, and theta equals over here at 5 pi over 6. So the shaded region involves this angle in between. So if I kind of draw it out here, from this radial arm to this radial arm, we're going to be shading it. So what I'm going to do, kind of like when we did area between two curves, is <clears throat> I'm going to draw a radial arm from my pole, extending it to some random point on the circle here, and I'm going to draw that in. Now over here in the shaded area, I make a solid like we did before, and down here, dashed. Okay, Just like our hopes. So I'm going to blow up that radial arm. It kind of goes at an angle point, draw it like so. This is the only shaded part. And I want to find the area of the shaded. Well, just like we did when we did uh, volumes and areas, this is the radius of the outside. And this, I'm going to subtract the radius of the inside. So if I think about it like this, to get the area of my uh, polar function, I'm going to take the radius of the outside, the whole part, minus the radius of the inside. Now, so I take a look. Well, what is the outside function? Well, the outside function 
is my circle. The inside function, that's the whole part here. That's this hole in here. The inside is my lemicon. So I'm going to subtract out the lemicon. Or lemison. So I'm looking at those areas now. So solving this one, if I write it out as an integral for the area of the circle, it's going to be one half the antiderivative of the circle function, three sine theta squared d theta minus, for the lemison, one half, two minus the sine of theta squared d theta. Now, that's my setup. Now I need a domain. Well, the domain, well, where does it start? It starts at pi over 6, ends at 5 pi over 6. And the same thing for the lemison, pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Now you might be asking, because these have the same domain, could we write this as a single integral? And yes, you can in this case. I can go 1 half pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, 3 sine of theta squared minus 2 minus sine of theta squared d theta. So I can write it as a single integral as well. So that's kind of a tough one right there. All right, now if you go to part two, I'm going to take a look at how we find a common interior. This one's a little bit tougher to set up here, so we're going to do that one in part two. Okay? All right, see you soon. Bye-bye.